About 21% of all the energy that we use in the United States is consumed in our homes. And for every kilowatt hour of electricity that we use, that's a pound of greenhouse gases that goes up into the atmosphere. That's why energy efficiency is such a big component to sustainability and why it's such a big component of most green building programs. Now, to build energy efficient homes, it doesn't have to be a lot more expensive. In fact, just pay attention to the basics. First of all, let's talk about orientation and glazing. Um, the sun has a big impact on the cooling loads of our home and can also help heat the home. That's why we want the long axes of our home to face the south so we can take advantage of the sun in the winter and be shielded from the sun in the summer. Utilizing porches and overhangs also are good strategies to control solar gains. But also glazing is important. Most energy codes now require that in, in areas of air conditioning, uh, which is about 98% of all the homes in the United States, um, require that we have a certain low solar heat gain coefficient glass. Typically most codes require that you have a U factor of 0.4 or lower and a solar heat gain of 0.4 or lower. That ensures that you're getting the types of glazing that works in winter and also works in the summer months. For example, the amount of energy from the sun that strikes any square foot of surface is about 250 BTUs per square foot. So for a typical home, that means that about 45% of our design cooling load is due to solar gains through glass. So the glazing is really, really important. Another area that's important in homes is to have an adequate amount of insulation. There are all types of insulation that we can choose from. We have fibrous insulation, we have cellulose insulation, we have open cell spray foam, we have closed cell spray foams, we have sheet stock. All these products can be good insulators, but it's important that these insulation products be installed properly. And that's why if you're building Energy Star homes, they now require that you complete the thermal bypass checklist. This is basically a checklist that goes through a, a number of points and one of those areas is the quality of the installation of the insulation. Making sure that the insulation touches all six sides of its air barriers in full alignment, it's not compressed, it's installed properly. Um, another area that's important to recognize is that when we're using uh, other types of insulation is that they, they too are installed properly. All insulation can work well as long as they're installed carefully. Another important part of building an energy efficient home is controlling air infiltration. Um, when the wind blows across our house, House, it pushes out the air that we pay to heat and cool. So controlling air infiltration is also an important part of the codes. Air sealing is also very important to achieve that from the inside as well as the out. On the outside, we use weather resistive barriers like building wraps that uh, reduce air infiltration and also keep out water. On the inside, we caulk and seal and uh, we foam around those places that are more prone for air leakage. So controlling air infiltration is important. Another reason why it's important to control air infiltration is because air contains moisture. And that moisture moves from the outside to the inside or inside to the outside. That moisture can condense on cold surfaces and wreak lots of havoc. Another important area to make energy efficient homes is to make sure that we have an adequately designed and sized heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. That means that we want to make sure the system, first of all, is sized properly. Uh, oftentimes, heat and air conditioning systems are oversized and the duct systems are undersized. So when we size a system, we want to make sure that we use the Air Conditioning Contractors of Association Manual, ACA Manual J, the latest version or its equivalent, in order to properly size the equipment. Then we want to use ACA Manual S to select the equipment and then to make sure that the ductwork is designed right. Oftentimes it's undersized while the HVAC system is oversized, which leads to havoc. Um, having that HVAC system, the ductwork system designed properly means that you're going to be using ACA Manual D to size the ducts accordingly. Now, the downside to having equipment that's oversized is typically with air conditioning systems, the units run short cycles, so they don't run really long enough to reduce the humidity levels. They cool the house down quick, but they don't run long enough to get rid of the humidity, and so what happens then is the house feels cold and clammy. One way that we can be assured that we're controlling air infiltration is to do a blower door test. Now, a blower door test is just a simple test that we can do to quantify how leaky our homes are. It also helps us find out where those leaks are at. A blower door test is a very simple test. Basically, they take a fan and they put it in the doorway and they uh, turn on the fan and depressurize the home. And from that, they can quantify the effective leakage area and its air infiltration rate.
Another critical component to building energy efficient homes is to making sure that that HVAC system is installed properly. On the typical home, we have about three to 400 CFM of duct leaks. Now imagine if you were building cars and 25% of the gas leaked out when your customers drove off. Now you wouldn't be in business very long. Well, that's the way our homes are. You know, 20 to 25% of all the energy to heat and cool our home is lost through leaks in the ductworks. And oftentimes that ductwork is located outside of conditioned space, so it's lost to the outdoors. One of the ways to design and build a more efficient system is to make sure that the ductwork is enclosed in conditioned spaces. That way when it leaks, it doesn't leak to the outdoors. Now, it's also important to test that system. Um, it, we don't know how well we're sealing the ducts unless we test them. So we want our ducts to be sealed with the appropriate type duct tapes, and we also want them to be sealed, if necessary, with the appropriate type mastics. Now, sealing ducts is very simple, it's very fast, but typically what we want to do is we want to seal our ducts and test them so that they're less than 6% of fan flow. So that means if I've got a 1,200 cubic feet of air per minute blower, and I want to have less than 6% of fan flow, that means I simply multiply, take 6% of uh, 1,200 CFM, that means my duct leakage can't be more than 72 CFM. If it's more than that, then it's, it's, it's not gonna be as good as that system could be. Again, we're trying to pay to heat and cool the indoors, not the outdoors. So an HVAC system that's properly designed and sized and installed properly is really important. We want to make sure that duct works installed in such a way that there's no cranks or gaps or cracks or smashed areas of ducts, that the flux ducts have long sweeping bends and it's adequately supported. Another important uh, component to energy efficiency is making sure that we have good appliances and lighting. About 8% of all the energy that we use in our home is used to light our homes. So they have new technologies such as compact fluorescent lights that use roughly a fourth the energy and last 10 times as long. They have new LED technologies that have very high lumens per watt. All of these products are excellent in terms of reducing our lighting load. Appliances also use a significant amount of energy. When we look at a typical home's um, total electric cost, about 60% of that is heating and cooling. Roughly 15 to 20% of that is water heating, and the rest are appliances and lighting. So using Energy Star rated appliances, we're assured that we're going to have appliances that are 30 to 50% more efficient than traditional uh, appliances. So all these tips go a long way to helping us build a more efficient home and a more sustainable home because it's energy efficient.